live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I've made quite a few videos in the past about kicks that saved careers. I did one about Pete Stoyanovich and how his make in overtime against the Browns in 1989 likely kept his career afloat. He wound up kicking until 2000. And I did one about Ryan Lindell and how his make in overtime against the Chargers in 2001 kept his career going. He wound up kicking until 2013. There have been plenty of moments where a kicker was down to his final chance, then made the kick and wound up having a pretty successful career. And in a 1980 game between the New York Jets and Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football, that's exactly what happened. A kicker was explicitly told that he needed to make the kick or he'd be cut. And the end result changed NFL history forever. This is the story behind the kick that saved Pat Leahy's career. First, we need some context as to how we got to the point where Leahy was fighting for his job. Leahy became the kicker for the Jets in 1974, and he was a fairly solid kicker for the team. In 1978, he was even named the first team All-Pro after hitting over 73% of his field goals while going 41 for 42 on extra points and finishing second in the league in both field goals and points scored. In fact, during that 1978 season, he became the first and only kicker in Jets history to this day to be named a first team All-Pro. Entering his sixth season in 1979, it was looking like the Jets were steady at the kicker position. Heck, with Gary Yapremia no longer on the Dolphins, it was looking like there was a shot that Leahy would become the undisputed best kicker in the AFC. But that never happened. In fact, his 1979 season was a disaster. Through the first six games of the year, Leahy was 8 for 13 on field goals, hitting just 61.5% of his kicks. And he was 12 for 15 on extra points, hitting just 80% of those. Remember that back then, extra points were from the two yard line. So this was especially bad. Among kickers to attempt at least 15 extra points, Leahy had the third worst percentage in the league, only ahead of Steve Little and Tony Linhart. I made a video about Linhart during that 1979 season, if you want to check that out in the upper right corner. As for the field goal percentage, 61.5% on its own was not bad back then. Nowadays, a percentage like that would get you cut. But in 1979, that ranked 14th out of 28 qualified kickers. However, when you break it down, Leahy's field goals were chip shots. His longest kick that year that he made was 34 yards. He hit just 50% of his kicks from outside of 25 yards. Easy chip shot field goals inflated that field goal percentage to look way better than it actually was. And after the first six games, he missed the rest of the season with a strained right knee. Safe to say, his 1979 season was nothing short of a disaster. Would things get better in 1980? Well, not quite. In fact, it got off to about the worst possible start imaginable. In week one against the Baltimore Colts, the Jets were down 17 to 14 in the fourth quarter. With roughly two minutes left in the game, Leahy lined up for a 32-yard field goal. It hit the upright and missed, and the Jets lost the game by three. In week five against the Patriots, Leahy went one for three in a 21 to 11 loss. In week six against the Falcons, Leahy missed a 38-yard field goal. And the following week against the Seahawks, Leahy missed a kick. In a four-game stretch, Leahy was two for six, and was hitting just 50% of his kicks on the season, including that missed game winner against Baltimore that set the tone for a disastrous 0-5 start. In 1978, Leahy was a first-team All-Pro. Midway through 1980, he was arguably the worst kicker in pro football, consistently missing from any distance that wasn't a chip shot. If Leahy was lining up for a kick outside the red zone, just forget about it. And in the week leading up to their next game, head coach Walt Michaels was fed up. He issued a verbal ultimatum to Leahy, saying that if Leahy's field goal percentage drops below 500, I'm not telling you what might happen. In fact, Michaels was ready to cut Leahy right after that Seahawks game, but only opted against it once he consulted with special teams coach Joe Jardy, and Jardy told him that some of the misses were not Leahy's fault. Because of Jardy's comments, Michaels was willing to give Leahy one more chance. But the message was clear. If you go below 50, you're done. In other words, And that takes us to this game, October 27, 1980, Monday Night Football at Chase Stadium between the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. This was just the second time ever that the Jets were hosting a Monday Night game at Chase Stadium. When they hosted one the year before in 1979, it was an absolute disaster, and you can check that video out in the upper right corner. 
Let's just say that their Monday night game last year was so bad and got so out of control that for this one, there were 350 security guards roaming the area and there were police officers in riot gear. And much like the last time the Jets hosted a Monday night game, they jumped out to a 14-0 lead through three quarters. This time, it was Scott Durking who scored from one yard out in the second to get things going, and Richard Todd who scored from 16 yards out to extend the lead some more before halftime. Midway through the fourth quarter, it was still 14-0, with the Jets looking to keep their drive alive. On third down, Todd throws it on a swing route to Bruce Harper, who drops the pass. He had open field in front of him and had a surefire first down, but dropped the easy pass. With that, the Jets are 48 yards away. Michaels decides to go for the field goal, and sends Pat Leahy out. Remember, the longest kick of Leahy's career was 48 yards, which happened in 1977. And now, he's not only lining up for a career-long kick, but if he misses it, he's below the 50% line, and he's cut. What happens next is nothing short of clutch. Roll the tape. For out comes Pat Leahy. Howard mentioned he's been troubled this year. This much of last season with the knee, never regained the form that he had in 78 when he was 22 of 30. This will be a 48 yard attempt. A lot of distance and a whole yeah. bunch of accuracy. 48 yard field goal, Pat Leahy, and he is congratulated by his teammates. He has been under a lot of pressure with the Jets, and the Jets now assume a commanding position of 17 to nothing over the Dolphins. After missing kick after kick to the left, Leahy drilled this one down the middle. It's a 48-yard field goal to make it a three-possession game, and though Miami would try now to come back, it would be too little too late, as the Jets won the game 17-14. Afterwards, Leahy said that he was just happy that the game was over with, since he knew his job was on the line. And his teammates knew him too, since after Michael's comments to the media, it was not necessarily a secret. In fact, they were so happy for Leahy that they issued him the game ball. As it turns out, that kick was a turning point in not just his season, but in his career. Leahy hit 8 of his next 11 kicks, including the game-winning field goal in overtime against the Houston Oilers, and ended the season with a percentage above 63%. While that's obviously not great, it's well above the 50% line that he was at during the midway point. Leahy would remain the kicker for the Jets in 1981, and wound up kicking another 11 years for the team. Because of that make against the Dolphins, Leahy wound up playing 18 seasons in New York, and would not retire until after the 1991 season. If you want to learn more about his retirement and Raul Alegre, the man who replaced him at the end of that season, click the video in the upper right corner. Coincidentally, that game also took place against the Dolphins. Leahy built an impressive 18-year career off of one kick, and even had a second wind of sorts in the late 80s, where from 1986 to 1990, while in his late 30s, he finished inside the top five in field goal percentage four times. By the time he retired, he was third all-time in NFL history in scoring with 1,470 points. Truly impressive stuff right there. And as a side note, it's a shame that he's not in the Jets' ring of honor. His induction is long overdue. It's amazing how sometimes one play is all it takes to build an entire career. If Leahy misses that career-long kick against the Dolphins, that might be the end of the road entirely for him. Instead, the man on thin ice makes the kick and plays for more than a decade after that. The Jets went 4-12 in 1980, and were 1-6 entering that Monday night game. And yet despite that, and despite all the other notable kicks that the franchise has had in its 60 years, it's amazing how a kick in a seemingly meaningless game might have turned out to be one of the most important kicks in the history of the New York Jets. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaroGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters throughout the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.